Today's video is going to be a little bit different than my usual content. So we're going to cover two topics. Why I use a different CPU when comparing the 7900 XTX and the RTX 4090 and the issues that I've been having with the Radeon RX 7900 XTX which also contributes to the reason why I use two different CPUs. So I have two different PCs. I have my RTX 4090 paired with the Ryzen 7800X3D and then I also have the 5900X PC which is paired with the 7900XTX. The 4090 PC is a pain to take apart basically the way it's uh, the type of case that I'm using and the way I have it set up and the 5900X PC is an open case PC which is I've primarily made it so that I can swap hardware easier in and out okay so that makes it a lot easier for me to compare the two also when I make my comparisons I make them at 4k with ultra settings and they're both GPU bound essentially so the type of CPU that you use is irrelevant because when I compared it in Lords of the Fallen there was a person commenting saying that essentially who doesn't really understand how GPUs work was saying that well the 7800XD is 20% or so faster than the 5900X because he's seen that on some review and basically had I used the 7800X 3D then the 7900XDX would have been 20% faster and unfortunately that's not how things work if, the, if you're GPU bound you could use a CPU from the future it's not going to be faster this video here is a video I made a few months ago of uh, Fort Solace, the game where I essentially tested the 7900XDX with both 5900X and 7800X3D to essentially show that if you're GPU bound, for those who don't understand it, it's not going to matter the different CPUs that you're using. Now, if we were playing at like 1080p or 1440p, maybe, right? If, if we're CPU bound, then the CPU matters. If we're GPU bound, then it doesn't matter. So that's the first reason, and perhaps the main reason, right? I'm not some mainstream reviewer or anything like that. I'm comparing two of my PCs, two of my best GPUs, and it is fair because they're it's GPU bound, right? So if you understand it, that makes sense. Now I have a long history with AMD GPUs. I have an R9 270X. I have an RX 580. I had a 5700XD that I sold, and I used it for a whole year. Never had any driver issues or anything while people are having issues. Have had a 6800XD, no issues with that. And the 7900XDX issues I have is only when I pair it with the 7800X3D. So when I put it in my 4090 PC. When it's paired with the 5900X, I have no issues with the 7900XDX. And it's really strange and annoying. And I will show you what these issues are. For the sake of transparency here, I will show uh, the pairing of the hardware. So it's going to be on both my platforms. We're using the 7900XDX and we've paired it here with the 7800X3D. And we're using 32 gigs of 6000 megahertz C30 memory. We're using an ROG Strix X670EA Wi-Fi motherboard, which is a pretty high-end board. Not the top of the line, but it's a pretty high-end board, not a cheap one. And we're also using the... Sapphire Nitro Plus 7900 XTX, one of the best, if not the best, air cooled cards. And we've overclocked this card to as much as I can overclock it to where it's stable. And this is the overclocking profile here. And for the second PC, we're using the 5900X, which is where my 7900 XTX mainly resides. And we've paired it with 32 gigs of RAM as well, 3600 megahertz, CL16. And we're using an ROG Strix B550F gaming Wi-Fi motherboard, which is a decent motherboard. And again, we're using the same Nitro Plus with the same overclock. Now we're going to go on Alan Wake 2 and compare the game on both PCs side by side so that you can see the issues that I'm having. And maybe, hopefully, someone has a solution because I've tried a lot of things and I don't know what to do. The now that we're in the game, so the we're going to go over our settings real quick. So we're running the game at 4K with all the settings maxed out except for ray tracing. So I captured this footage because I will be making a 7900 XTX versus 4090. We're just testing rasterization, but that's a separate video. But I just wanted to show the settings that we're using here anyway on both builds. Okay. Now what I want you to pay attention to is the 7800X3D side, which is on the left. Now you'll notice that as far as frames per second, if that's all you could see, 
it's essentially the same thing, right? Because like I explained, when you're GPU bound, the CPU does not matter. As long as the GPU is at 100%, it's doing all that it can do. However, you're going to start to see a big difference here where the 7800X3D side has very consistent, annoying stutters that, I, I mean, it's unplayable. Like, if... I was to build my dream PC, right? And I went to Micro Center and I bought a 7800X3D, my motherboard, and the 7900XX, and I put it all together and I was getting this level of performance, I would be extremely upset. Now, it's not really a big issue for me, mainly because the 7900XTX is to be paired with a 5900X, for now anyway, because that's my setup. That's kind of what I'd be using it. But... If it was just a 7800X AMD, I would be extremely upset. And my history with AMD has actually been really, really good. And I've always stood up for people that complain about driver issues and stuff like that. Now, I know that a lot of it is legitimate. There's people that I know that have had issues. I know people that have had issues with a NVIDIA as well. I have had issues with NVIDIA as well. But I know some of this stuff is used for people that participate in tribalism, which, in my opinion, is sad that people uh, engage in that sort of behavior. But that's besides the point here. I just want you to see just how different the performance is between using a 7800X3D and a 5900X for me. Now, I don't know if it's something to do with my motherboard, but then again, this does not happen with the 6800XD, does not happen with the 4090, does not happen with the 3080 Ti. It just happens with this GPU and CPU combination, which is very weird because you know, this is the latest AMD, the best gaming CPU AMD makes, and the base, best gaming GPU AMD makes, you would, they're sort of designed to be paired together. So I don't know what it is that is causing this. Now, I have tried a few different things. I've tried with Sam on and Sam off, and sometimes having Sam on actually makes it worse. And I did record some footage that we'll be looking at with Sam on versus off. And it is Sam off is a little bit better, but there's still issues there as well. Now I've looked, uh, I've looked into Reddit. I've researched this issue, and there is other people that are having similar issues with pairing uh, 7900 XTX or maybe other 7000 GPUs as well with Ryzen 7000 CPUs. And it's not a lot of people, but it is some. And I wish I knew what it was that is causing it because I've tried everything. I've tried running the RAM at the default DDR5 settings. I've obviously <laughs> reset the CMOS. I've done everything that I know how to do, right? I've disabled even SAM in the motherboard. And yeah, it's, it's very unusual. It's very annoying. So this is another reason why I don't pair the 7900 with the 7800 XCD. Firstly, I wouldn't anyway, because like I said, I don't want to dismantle my 4090 PC all the time. And it's there's no reason to when you're GPU bound, but this is a, if I was to compare the 7900XDX with the same CPU, the 7900XDX would look really really bad the way it performs because the one percent lows would be trash with with these stutters, and it's not every game right like the Fort Solace game I showed earlier the clip it that was fine there, and it's not with like sometimes some driver versions are better than others. But it is consistent enough to be pointless for me to try to pair this GPU with this CPU. Now, I'm hoping that maybe someone sees this video who has encountered the same issue and was able to fix it. But like I said, I am not like some master with PC hardware. But I, I would like to think that I know what I'm doing more than most people. And I've tried what I know and it doesn't work. I will be doing a, a Windows reinstall on my 7800X3D because I will be upgrading my NVMe and I want to do a fresh install. So maybe that'll fix it. But I do use DDU. I've used AMD cleanup software. I've used it all. Every, I've done everything I can. So let us jump into SAM on versus off so that you can see actually turning SAM off does help the stutter a little bit. The job is unfinished. Okay, so now we have Sam on on the left and Sam off on the right. And if you pay attention, you will notice that with Sam disabled, the stutters are a little bit better. So somehow it is related to this type of combination. Maybe some setting somewhere is causing this. I would like to know if there's any of you guys out there 
who have uh, RX 7000 with the Ryzen 7000 paired and are dealing with similar issues. Maybe it happens in some games, maybe not in others. Maybe it happens with some driver versions and not in others. I don't know. But if you do, leave a comment below. I would like to know about it. I also have a Ryzen 7700X as well that I have tried swapping the CPU with. And it's the same thing. I, it's essentially the same thing that happens. It doesn't matter what, what uh, CPU I use, but I don't have any other ones, Ryzen 7000s, but it's still the same issue. Another thing that I forgot to mention, actually, is if you notice on the 7800X 3D system, I'm using the AMD overlay to show the power consumption, and that's because on the 7800X 3D system, on my AM5 platform, the option to show power consumption only for the RX 7000 GPUs is missing. And I've noticed this is the same thing with other people as well. So I don't know what's up with that. It only shows up on the AMD overlay. So that's why. But anyway, guys, I just want to keep you guys up to date. And for this video to act as a sort of, uh, you know, when people come at me sometimes for using different CPUs to show them that when you're GPU bound, it doesn't matter. But I also have issues pairing 7900X6 with the 7800X 3D. So that's essentially the reason for this video and to keep you guys up to date. So if you did like this video and found it informative, give it a like. And I want to thank you for watching this video. If you did watch it this far or whatever, I appreciate it. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.